Pixel art has the ability to communicate so much with so little. With single blocks of color, skilled artists create the illusion of depth, form, and shape in a way that photorealism can't. Every color counts in pixel art. There are rarely any unnecessary gradients. Each pixel either represents extreme lights, dark darks, or midtones. That's why images come out so simple in the best way possible. This heightened readability allowed pixel art to age gracefully. It's hard to believe that games 30 years ago look so good when games 20 years ago aged worse than a chronic sunbather who smokes cigarettes and only eats McDonald's. That's right, millennials. We're old. They're not much on their own, but with meticulous planning, every pixel becomes greater than the sum of their parts. So what even is a pixel? A pixel is simply the smallest unit of a digital image on any display device. So technically, the most detailed painting is pixel art if viewed on your phone. But in terms of video games, it originates from an era when hardware limitations set clear boundaries. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. I, I mean when the Super Nintendo hit the market. It's hard to believe that the NES and the SNES are only separated by 7 years. Just look at your best looking NES game next to your average Super Nintendo title. That's because the Super Nintendo could display 256 colors at one time compared to the NES's 4. With this newfound freedom, artists created backgrounds and characters unlike anything the world's ever seen before. With 256 colors to use, artists could use their imagination to bring environments to life. Using vibrant colors, games contain scenes of bustling towns, peaceful meadows, dark castles, and more. And the beauty of these environments and characters aren't the stagnant images themselves, but the animations that accompany them. Looking at isolated sprites on a sprite sheet, Mario's iconic run is only a couple of frames. And even the more seemingly complex animations are only a couple of frames. The pixel artist utilizes each frame to create the illusion of motion. These simple animations only add to the overall charm of pixel art. Despite being so versatile, games that leaned heavily on pixel art disappeared from home consoles after the year 2000. And I don't blame them. What AAA company is going to limit themselves to only 2D when they can have 3Ds? That's 3Ds! This was a sad era for video game graphics. It was a necessary step, don't get me wrong. It was just hard going from this to... There you are. Luckily, the indie market has rejuvenated interest in such a beautiful art style. Today's game developers need not worry about the shackles of strict hardware limitations. Art directors can adhere to signature calling cards of the style while pushing it to its absolute limit. While graphics and video games have surpassed what I ever thought possible, it's modern indie games like Flint Hook and Kingdom New Lands that left a lasting impression on me. While something like the Unreal 5 engine is technologically impressive, Photorealism is just a race to replicate real life, but I'd rather enjoy a stylized impressionist painting. And that's basically what pixel art is, the impressionist painting of the video game world, and I love it. 